another Straight Up Tuesday tip. I'm Tom Shellcross, licensed agent with Second City Real Estate. With me, as always, is owner and founder of GC Realty, Mark Ainley. And with us for the first time, we have Vince Sliwa. L- little known fact, Vince and I went to high school together and uh, also played baseball together. And now here we are 20 years later, uh, and he's done, I don't know, probably five or six garages for me. Uh, Vince's company is A Windy City Garage Corporation. They've been in business for 15 years all around Chicagoland. They've built over 300 garages. They've also done thousands of garage doors, um, just replaced them all over the city and the surrounding burbs. So no one better than Vince to talk about garages today. So Vince, welcome to the show. How are you, man? Thank you. Thank you. Doing great, guys. Doing great. All right. So we can take this a lot of different ways, but we'll start with just really simple question um, and we'll go from there. Let's say someone's buying a building. They got the detached garage in the back. It's fallen over. It needs to be replaced. They don't want to do just a pad. They know that their tenant base is going to require them to have a garage. Can you just list out a few things that they need to be aware of if they're going to build a new garage and then walk us through just you know the rough process and, and the cost uh, so they can start to budget for that in case they're in this situation? Yeah. So the way, the way it would start, um, really, when you look at it, you want to maybe look at the structure, see if it's got things that would maybe have a violation attached to it. So checking like the building department and looking for records of violations to see if there's already stuff on there, especially if you're just buying the property. Um, That's one thing you can do prior to purchase. Uh, But when you do purchase and you know you need to build a new one, um, knowing the size of your lot, having a current survey are gonna be really, really big uh, tools uh, prior to any kind of construction. And then once you're kind of got everything down and you know what easements you need to have and the setbacks and whatnot, um, then you can really start designing the garage to tailor the need of it. If it's just a parking garage or if it's going to be something a little bit more extravagant, you're going to use it for storage or whatnot. Um, But then from there, it would be filing the permit and getting all the necessary paperwork with the city. Is hiring a vendor like yourself, is it a one-stop shop where you, you come to, we, I come to you, I say, I need to have this garage demoed that's there. I need to have a new garage plan drawn up for a new garage. And I need to build it. Or is that, are we still going to kind of piecemeal that? Tell me about how you work so, with your clients. Yeah, absolutely. So when we start the process with the client, uh, we will be pretty much in-house with the entire process. So from the consultation through to the actual finish, we're going to be there every step of the way. Um, we have cement crews that we work with for a long time. Our builders are in house, our door guys are in house and the electrician we use, uh, again, it's, it's a long time relationship with the electrician we use. So really when we come into the process, it's going to just basically be everything handled all by us. Um, we, we are open to working with other people. If, if another GC has somebody, they want to do something special to the garage, you know, we are open to that, but if it's, uh, you're trying to keep it all simple in one shop, then yeah, we, we can, we definitely accommodate that. We, we talk about on here all the time about, uh, the rehab process for permits or even new build has come up in here many times, but you know, we've never talked about getting a permit to rebuild a garage or build a new garage. Like what's yeah. that like? And how does that compare to the other permits? We all dreadfully know that process of. Oh yeah, so it, it could go it could go different ways depending. He said, on oh what yeah, you oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, so if it's just a standard box and you're parking that car twenty by twenty, standard twenty five one twenty five lot, you're good. You can get an easy permit. It's done online. It's seamless. Uh, the city's great, and they get it out to you pretty much instantly. Uh, once you start getting into the more specialty garages or anything that's going to be over a certain square foot of six hundred or um, anything taller than what is kind of allowed on the easy permit, then you have to get the architect, the plans, the zoning, similar to like you guys would do with your remodels. What's, what's the ceiling height? So I, I, some of the stuff I'm very uh, unknown. So, I'd so love to- a standard, a standard ceiling height for a garage right now is eight feet. We are seeing that clients are gearing more towards the nine foot as, you know, people get bigger, larger cars and they want to be able to accommodate those. Uh, but the standard is still eight is what you see mostly throughout industry standard seven foot overhead doors. Um, but we are definitely seeing that change as the times have gone on. 
if someone goes from eight to nine feet, do they have to go through that extended process or can that still fall under? No, the- that that's going to qualify for your easy permit. It's when you really extend the roof height beyond 15 feet, then you're going to have to get into the variance and the zoning and the drawings and everything else that entails with that. All right. I, I got another one. I'm going to keep coming with this. What about dormering too? Yeah, I've oh, seen yeah, that a lot more. So yeah, the dormers, people love them. It adds that storage up top. Um, it, it gives you that space that you could, uh, you know, re- really, really utilize it whichever way you need. But um, yeah, anytime we're doing something like that, we're going to need a set of plans. What about uh, just a question about uh, three car garages? Like what, what's the width of the lot have to be in order to put a three car garage, three car so wide? A, th- a three car garage is usually about 27. So it would be a minimum of about a 30 foot lot. And then you might need a firewall on one side. Uh, if you wanted to kind of like still have a walkway off to one side, but yeah, 27 by 20 to 22 are going to be your standard three car sizes. Okay. Got it. And when Good you stuff. have a double lot, you can pretty much, you know, you, you got all the room in the world. You don't have to worry about setbacks or easements. Uh, the only thing you still have to fall within a certain square footage though, with the city code suburbs, different story, whole different ball game. You could build a mini house in the suburbs. Uh, on a side note, did you guys hear the uh, in the state legislation right now? One of the new things that's on the table to get voted on is the requirement of having the uh, hybrid charging stations in all garages, new built or or reconstruction of stuff is, is uh, how it's initially written. But they also have a plan to like if you just have a house or a garage, like you just have to have one. Uh, so it's something that's it's interesting that we'll see. That uh, has been probably one of our biggest requests this past two seasons. Really? Has been people wanting to future proof the garage. So bringing in the larger electrical service to accommodate the Tesla or the whatever EV you're going to have. Um, just even running the conduit empty so you can pull the wire through later once you know which car you're going to purchase. You know, that's always been, that was a very popular option too, just because you don't know exactly which charging unit you're going to need if you don't have the car. But if that's the way things are going, you want to definitely be prepared for that. And again, when we have our consultation with our clients, these are things that we definitely talk about and discuss. Real quick, I know you got you got something, Tom. You're itching too. Uh, for the power for for a car, is that just a, a 220 uh, that that you have to run from from the building? Yeah, so it's going to be a 40 through 60 amp, I believe. Um, whichever, again, they're all different. So, um, but you could do a sub panel to the garage and then have the power out there, like 100 amp, 60 amp, and then have it ready to distribute once you do buy your car or your electronic vehicle. Uh, but most charging stations are anywhere from 40 to 60 amp, depending on which you know car you buy. Awesome. It's something we learned last year. So we we did that at my house. We, I don't have an electric car, but you don't know five years from now. So we had it all set up and we're doing yeah. it on all these flips because the first one we did on our first seven figure one that we did, we didn't pipe the electric this way. And of course, that's what they wanted because the person buying that had his Tesla and we weren't ready for it. So lesson learned. We do that every time now. Yeah. And that makes sense. Even just to run the empty conduit, that way it's there, it's in the concrete, it's in the wall. You can always pull the wire through later, you know, and and you're selling, you know, like you said, seven figure flips, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you're kind of getting that ready. And, uh, you know, it's really not a hard thing once the conduit's in the ground. What a great tip. What a great tip. So so Vince, let's talk real quick, going back to the, the original question. Rough cost. What does it cost to build a garage in Chicago today? I mean, we're recording this, you know, at the beginning of 2023. Yeah. Let's just take your normal box on a 25 by 125, sure. you know, two and a half yeah. car garage. Roughly, what should I put on that spreadsheet if I'm budgeting for that? So, so yeah, definitely um, cost is, has gotten really crazy with inflation and other things. And um, we're seeing that a standard two car garage is going to start at right around 20. And then from there, it's going to go up. Uh, and it goes up just based on square footage, finishing materials, roof style, you know, that that's all going to come into play. But your basic two car box, you're going to be starting right around 20. And that, and just to be clear, like that's you know, we're, we're doing the cement. We have the garage. We have the siding on the side. Correct. You know, the- yeah. Yeah. That would be your foundation, your framing, your vinyl siding, standard architectural shingle, uh, garage door and gutters all included. A complete exterior finish. Yeah. It sounds so high that when you break down each component, it's like, oh yeah, that's, 
well, it, we, we nickel the dime twenty five hundred dollars to death <laughs> well it, it's just insane what, what was it two years ago when the lumber was just spiking and spiking i would literally do quotes and you know with my business we're booking projects for future so if i'm, I'm meeting with clients in february we're building them in march april may etc and so yeah that that is always the challenge now especially um is really trying to keep true to these budgets with you know the way prices have been escalating it's it's been a challenge that's for sure uh, but i yeah. think we've kind of stabilized with the lumber market and other items are kind of like normalizing so it's easier for us to do it but yeah it made my job impossible two years ago it was like anybody i saw in march april that bid was no good but i still had to honor some of them it was uh definitely a more challenging point you know, a standard two car garage 45 years ago would have been 12 grand, 14 grand, you know, so yeah. it's, it's seen a dramatic increase for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And we'll, uh, man, we'll have you back to the full episode because we can do a deep dive here, but for our listeners who aren't, are, aren't familiar with you, you guys also do just to plug it out there. You guys swap out garage doors. You do fixes on garage doors that aren't working. Like it's not just, you know, build the full thing. So anything garage related, like Great, yeah, great all, company to have in our back pocket. And we'll link to all your info in the show notes. All garage door needs from, from service, repair, new installations, even remodels have been quite popular, especially with, again, the prices of everything. Just, you know, bring in your garage, make it look brand new, but maybe it's not necessarily new, you know, kind of working with the clients within their budget. So, Awesome. Right. Mark, are we, are we playing for someone? And do we even have a sponsor anymore for this? Oh, our, our previous sponsor is we've not, uh, it might be our fault though, too. We, we haven't really, uh, made anything official, but, uh, today I do have, uh, Benny Copel from Fort Myers who actually bought a sweatshirt. That's the iron ironic part. He bought a sweatshirt. He lives in Florida. Uh, but, uh, the mail address is, uh, Fort Myers. That's how I know those things. But, uh, um, that, that being said, you know, we'll play, we'll, we'll sponsor us, uh, GC Realty Development and property manager for all your <laughs> responsive property manager needs can be today's, uh, sponsor. I, I, well, I like that, that this guy, uh, you know, it drops below 85 degrees. Everyone needs a sweatshirt, right? That might be why. <laughs> that, that might be why he's preparing for a uh, uh, cold break in the 40s, 50s. All right. So here's your question. Uh, Mark, you get first shot. And then Vince, you'll get a shot at it as well. So the city of Chicago, we're talking about garages, obviously mostly detached going into the alley. Chicago's got a lot of alley. So, you know, think about how big our city is and Mark's as a cheat, as a cheat sheet here. At its greatest extent, Chicago is 25 miles north-south and 15 miles east-west. How many miles of alley does Chicago have? If you took all the alleys we had, how many miles of alley are there in Chicago? And your options are 165 miles, 425 miles, 850 miles, 1,950 miles. And this is on the internet, so I know the number is accurate. I'm going to say, I would say 1,950. Like that, that's, I mean, you think about every block. I mean, if you're 25 by 25, yeah, I'm going 1950. Okay. Yeah. Vince? I'm, I'm going to go with that. I'm Look at you that. guys. Boom. 1950. <laughs> it's enough to stretch from Chicago to our friend Javier in Mexico, in Mexico City. Jeez. Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. That, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, think, think about like the upkeep and you have to, the, the, that, that's a drain on resources for the city. They should just kick everyone's yard back and, and build a garage in the front. That's what you should do. <laughs> no, then no. I, I love the idea of having garbage go out the back. Like when, yeah, when, when York, I go to New York, New I'm York just disgusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, is, that is pretty nasty. All right. All right. Awesome. Vince, thanks for coming on. We look forward to having you back here, Tom. Thank you as always listeners. Uh, we are going to be preparing here for our 200th episode here coming up. And if, uh, we, we have a pretty exciting lineup for that show. So uh, make sure you stay tuned. And if you have anybody that is uh, a real estate investor, friend, family, uh, even your enemy, get, share, share us with them and, and, and uh, kill them with kindness. So um, we are just trying to spread the word here in 2023 to be able to add value to more local people here in Chicago. Vince, thank you. Tom, thank you as always. And listeners, we'll see you Thursday. Thanks all. Thank you.